Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Let's start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakakudash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of GMS, Great, Great Millstone, who rule well in time of this truth. I want to say Shalom to the Bayat and Shalom to the sincere Aquathium who are staying in order according to the scriptures. I am the brother Shemayim from the Village Soldier Camp out here in Boston, Mass. All right, let's get straight to it. You know, um, I pray that this lesson is edifying to the elect. So this lesson is about, you know, the the Pope, you know, this uh, false prophet, false pastor, whatever you want to call it. You know, this man that proclaims that he's a... He's, uh, uh, a so-called man of the Lord, you know, this man that proclaims that, you know, uh, you know, the Lord left everything in his hands for, for an order for him to teach the world about the Lord, you know, because that's what everybody knows him as, you know, uh, everybody that believes in the Pope, you know, they think that he's a man of the Lord that was set up by the Lord to teach and guide the world about the word of God. You know, so uh, let me share this video. Pretty sure you guys seen it, but I got a couple scriptures, you know, proving that that this guy, man, he's he's actually a deceiver. You know, and he's not a man of the Lord. You know, so before I even show you the video, I want to uh, start off with this disclaimer, right? This is a copyright disclaimer. Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use. The purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. So YouTube, this is fair use. Okay, so uh, this is the videos on YouTube, you know, uh, this guy, Paul Francis, or whatever, you know, and this is the statement that he said. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Second. Nos quiere, estamos, somos todos hijos de Dios. Y Dios nos quiere, estamos y con la fuerza que luchamos cada uno por nuestra dignidad. Eh, ser homosexual no es un delito. No es un delito. Sí, pero es pecado. Bueno, primero, distingamos pecado por delito. También es pecado la falta de caridad con el prójimo. Vos como estás. La condena de la homosexualidad viene de, de, de lejos. Hoy día, por ejemplo, creo que los países que tienen condena legal son más de 50 condenas legales. Y de esto creo que 10 más o menos, un poquito por ahí, tienen la pena de muerte. No la nombran directamente, pero dicen eh, aquellos que tienen actitudes antinaturales, o sea, buscan decirlo de manera escondida. No hay países que tienen esta fuerza de tendencia, o al menos cultura de tendencia, esa fuerte tendencia. Eh, creo que es injusto acá en la audiencia. So there's a lot that he says, you know, um, let's go back from the beginning. So he starts off by saying that we are all children of God. No, we are all creations of God, but we are not all children of God. You know, there's a difference. You know, what do I mean by that? I mean, the Lord is only dealing with one nation. He has a nation that that he chose and that he only cares about. You know, let's get that. You know. You 
This is the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 2. And it reads, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Right? Who's that family? That's talking about Israel. Okay, because the Lord left the law, statutes, and commandments to the nation of Israel. Okay, let me get another scripture to prove that. Um, Okay, bear with me. This is Deuteronomy uh, 4 and 8. Uh, we'll start at 4 and 6. So Deuteronomy 4 and 6 says, keep therefore and do them. Uh, let me see what's the whole chapter say. All right, let's start at uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 6. Right, and it reads, let's start at verse 5. And it reads, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. What's the wisdom and the understanding? The, the law, statutes, and commandments, and the judgments, right? Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For that nation is there so great, who has God so nigh unto them? You see, that nation is so great, who has the Lord so close to them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? You see? So this, th these laws, statutes, and commandments is the wisdom that we have, you know, in the sight of all the other nations. These other nations, you know, they call us a... a, a a, a great nation because the Lord is so close to us and because there's a difference between us and those nations. You know, we got the law, statutes, and the commandments. Now, one more scripture before I go back to the video. All right, because the law, statutes, and the commandments were given to Israel, which is what separates us from the world. That's why we have this wisdom and knowledge. Right, and the Lord is clearly only dealing with us. I read it earlier, we are the only family that the Lord is dealing with. Okay. Now when we go to the book of Psalms, when we go to I believe it's chapter one forty nine, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Nope. It's I think it's probably one forty seven. Right. Uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19, it says, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. You see? Israel is a nation that, has a stat that knows the statutes and the judgments. This is the wisdom in the sight of all nations. It says, He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. You see, praise Yahweh, Bahashim Shai, because the Lord is only dealing with us. And now let's continue in the video. So we are not 
all children of God. We are all creations of God, but the Israelites are the children of God. Right? And he says, and God loves us as we are and for the strength that each of us has. This is, this is what this guy is saying. He said, being a, a, a sodomite is not a crime. It's not a crime. He said, yes, it's a sin, right? And he's slick, man. He's slick. He's a devil, man. He's saying it's not a crime. It's not a crime. He emphasizes it, right? And then he says, yes, but it is a sin. You see, and then he says, well, yes. But let's make a distinction first between sin and crime. You see? So he emphasizes that it's not a crime. He shortly speaks on that it is a sin, though, right? He knows it's a sin. He surely speaks on it. And then he goes on and saying, but it's also a sin to lack charity with one another. So what about that? Like, in other words, he's he's basically uh, watering down the fact or giving a political answer when you want to make yourself look politically right to a group of people. Right. Because why? Because this guy is a false pastor. This guy is a false prophet. He is following an agenda, the sodomite agenda. OK, he says it's not a crime, emphasizes it on twice. Then he goes, yes, it's a sin. But then he puts that to the back, right? He pushes that to the back and says, uh, but it's also a sin to lack charity with one another. Like basically saying, right, uh, uh, yeah, it's a sin, but it's even worse to lack charity with one another. Like put it like putting it in the back of the of 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 the I don't know that word he's saying, put it in the back of the wagon, in the back of the car. You know, like like not uh, expressing to the people how much of a sin uh, or how much of an abomination being a sodomite is. You see what I'm saying? This is called trimming your ways. This is exactly what he's doing. You see, and first of all, obviously it's not a crime because America, right? Babylon, a.k.a. America, has a philosophy where they are where they allow sodomite behavior and they and they uh push that upon the whole world. I'm gonna repeat that again. America pushes the philosophy that it's okay to be a sodomite. They push this all over the world. There's they have more uh uh so called sodomites or well, they are sodomites, you know. Uh, they have more rights than a so-called black male, Latino, Native American. They are they have more protection from the government and and uh, uh, law enforcement. That's a fact. These sodomites have have more protection than uh, than a so-called black man, Latino, Native American in this in this so-called great nation that you call America. All right. So now. That's very important for you to understand what's happening here. Okay, he's he's basically telling you it's not a crime when no one is saying it's a crime. You see, as a man of the Lord, and, and let me say this, no one is saying it's a crime in this world in present time. Why? Because back then, right? It was a crime and, and and actions would be taken, you know, in the early biblical times. But now as this world has just gone down the tube, you know, as iniquity abound, right? This has turned into a wicked world. And this world is, is controlled by Esau eating the so-called white man. So, of course, he's going to push side of my behavior. So he said it's not a crime, but it's a sin. And then he goes, throws that in the back of the of the wagon, in the back of the car, and goes, 
but it's also a sin to lack charity with one, with one another. Listen, guy, if you want to speak about uh, a sin to lack charity with one another, use that in a different topic. We're talking about being a sodomite, and you clearly switched it up. You clearly switched it up, and you don't want to talk about it. Aren't you a man of the Lord? Well, let's see what the scripture says. Let's see what the law says. Right? Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman. So if, you, if a man lays with a man, right? Or if a woman lays with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. It is a disgusting act. Right? So it is a sin. Right? It is a crime under the law of God. You people consider, consider yourselves Christians, right? It is a sin. You know, it is a sin and it is a crime under the law of God. After the law of the world. Because this world is ruled by wickedness. So, of course, it's not a crime, so-called crime. But the scripture says, if a man also lie with mankind, as he lie with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. What's what's the what's the consequence of that crime? It says they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. That uh, action of man being with man or woman with woman is an abomination worthy of of death. Right. See, what you guys don't understand is that. You don't understand that the Lord. The Lord is the ultimate judge. The heavenly father, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, they are the ultimate judge. And this world will be judged. The scriptures speak about how an effeminate man shall not inherit the kingdom. So what do you think is going to happen to these men? You see? As a man of the Lord, Pope Francis, you're supposed to be telling the people this. No one is asking you if it's a crime in the, in the, in the in the in the laws of of uh in the land of men. The laws that men have out here. No one is asking you. They ask you on homosexuality, right? On sodomite behavior. And you and you just, you know, uh What's the proper word for it? You just ignore the fact that that you're supposed to tell people the truth, right? From there, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. It says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. You see? Sodomite behavior is an abomination. What this guy is talking about, why isn't he telling the people? This was in January 24th, 2023. This is a couple of days ago. Why isn't this man that represents, which we know he doesn't, man, but to you people, this man that represents the, the Lord, why isn't he telling you this? Why isn't he, why isn't he warning you? Right, he said it's not a crime. Obviously, who said it is? This is this is the the land. This is this land, right? America and the world is governed by wickedness. So man has not made it a crime. You see, they give power to these sodomized behavior. They say this is twenty twenty three. People can do whatever. All right, but you you a man of the Lord. You a man of the cloth. You're supposed to tell him, look, man, we're not speaking about the, the laws of the land. We're, we're speaking about the laws of the heavenly father who, who I represent, right? Supposedly, right? You're supposed to tell him it is a sin. It is an abomination. And you shouldn't do it because the scriptures speak about how the Lord's going to judge those people. But you out here just putting that to the side and not giving the people warning. Let's continue on what it says. He 
He says the condemnation of the of the sodomite behavior, homosexuality goes long way goes a long way back. And I just read it to you in the book of Leviticus. What's the consequence, right? He said, nowadays, for example, I think that the countries that have legal, legal conviction are more than 50. Legal convictions. And of those, I think 10, more or less, have the death penalty. Right? We're talking about for homosexuality. They're saying that they don't name it directly what the crime is, which is uh, homosexuality, but they say who uh, those who have unnatural behaviors, which it is unnatural behavior, man. It's not natural. The law left of the woman for man and the man for woman. You know, ultimately, the woman is, is was created for the man. But in the sense that they both uh, come together to to create life. This guy, man. So he said, he says there are countries that have to force or tendency, have, have this force or tendency, or at least cultures that have that strong uh, tendency. He said he thinks it's unfair talking about the, um, about the, how these countries, uh, there's at least 50 countries that, that, you know, are against, you know, sodomite behavior, and 10 of them have a death penalty. He says he thinks it's unfair. You see, you don't represent God. It's the book of Jeremiah, verse 2, verse 33. It says, why trimmest thou thy ways to seek love? You supposed to represent the Lord. You have, you have people that follow you, man. You have people that follow you to represent the word of God and you're speaking uh, commandments of men. You're leaning in your own understanding. You're following the agenda. You're trimming your way. You're not speaking the word of God. Jeremiah 2 and 33 says, why trimmest thou thy ways to seek love? Right? Therefore, has thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways? You see, you trim your ways, man. You go and say, yes, it's a sin. And then you switch it up real quick. Right? But it's also a sin to not be chari uh, charitable with your brother. Like, listen, man, the topic is homosexuality, and you just basically uh, uh, didn't emphasize on the seriousness of this uh, 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 abominable act. This act is an abomination. You are trimming your ways to seek love of the people. Therefore, has thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways? You have, you are teaching the wicked ones to be wicked, to continue in their wickedness, man. Which ultimately, it is your way. You are a wicked man. This is Jeremiah 48 and 10. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. You see? Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. See, because a lot of you people are going to be like, listen, man, he said it's not a crime, but he did say it was a sin. Right. And you think that's enough. Right. He didn't emphasize on that as a sin. He didn't emphasize on what the Lord thinks about it. He didn't emphasize on what's the punishment from the Lord. He didn't warn the people to stop being a sodomite. You see? He goes, he goes, it's not a crime. It's a sin. Right? He emphasizes it's not a crime. You got to know the difference between crime and sin. Why the fuck do we got to know the difference between a crime and a sin? Who is asking if it's a crime? Let's say in America, who's asking if it's a crime? People are asking if it's a sin. You see? It goes against the laws of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. So cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. You are doing the work of the Lord deceitfully, uh, Pope Francis. The scripture says, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. 
you know, this is physically, but in this case, spiritually, man, you're supposed to warn the people. You're supposed to warn the people and tell them how it is. But you're holding back your sword, man. Right? The word of the Lord is a double-edged sword that cuts asunder. And you're not cutting these people with your words. See, us as men of the Lord, we're not out here trying to cut people, but it happens. The scriptures speak about how have I become your enemy for telling you the truth? The, the scriptures speak about how the word of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, is a double-edged sword that cuts deeper than any two-edged sword. You were doing the work of the Lord deceitfully and you're, and you're, and you're holding back your sword. The Lord says, curse be he. And you go, you are cursed, man. I got two more scriptures and we're going to close out. It's Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. You see, the real man of the Lord is going to give warning to the people. Okay, you're not doing that. Let's see what verse 18 says. When I say, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou's given him not warning. You see? So when we talk to the wicked, listen, man, the Lord's going, the Lord's going to judge you if you continue these wicked ways, right? Right? Listen to listen to this, right? When when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou's given him not warning. So the Lord is going to judge you wicked, you wicked men and women that are committing these sodomite behaviors, right? And the Lord has set up watchmen to give warning. Now, if you don't give warning, right? It says, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life. You see, when you tell a man, listen, man, the Lord's going to destroy you if you com if you continue to to commit a sin and continue your wicked ways, and He stops, you just you just save this life, not you, but the Lord through you, because the Lord chose you to give warning to that person. You see what I'm saying? But you gave warning. This, this and here it says, it says, and thou givest him not warning. So you, Pope Francis, you gave no warning. You're supposed to be you're supposed to be that watchman, right? I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. You're supposed to be that watchman, right, Pope Francis? But you're not giving warning. Let's see what the scripture says. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from the wicked ways to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. These men that are Israelites to continue in their wicked ways shall die in their in their wicked in their um in their iniquities. But their blood, but his blood will I require at that hand. You are guilty. Their blood is at your hand, Pope Francis. You have a lot of blood in your hand. And this a homosexuality a topic is just one of many false warnings that you have uh, given to the people not even warning you don't even give them warning verse 19 yet if thou warn the wicked and he return not from his wickedness so we warn a man and tell him that is a sin and he turns not from his wickedness nor from his wicked ways he shall die in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul so if he continues after you warn him he's gonna die in his iniquities but you have delivered your soul because you gave warning. Oh, Francis, you have a lot of blood in your hands. You have a lot of blood in your hands, man. I'm going to finish off with, uh, I believe it's Jeremiah 16, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what is it, 13? Let's see. I'm be 13. That's 23, okay. But Jeremiah 23, right? And it reads, Woe be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of the pasture. 
says the Lord. Woe goes into destruction. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. See, Pope Francis, you were supposedly a pastor that feeds the people, right? You represent the Lord. It says, ye have scattered my flock. You are not, you're not gathering the flock of the heavenly father and his only begotten son. You are scattering the flock by, by trimming your ways, by, by, uh, 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 what I read earlier in, in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah says, uh, by doing the work of the Lord deceitfully, right? You are scattering the flock. It says, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. And have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. You have a lot of a lot of uh, blood on your hand, man. I hope the elect understands this, you know, and the elect will understand. Okay, I pray that this lesson was edifying to the elect. For you people out there that are still uh, uh, listening and looking at the Pope as a man of the Lord, you know, come out of that spell. All right, he's following an agenda. Okay, he's one of the most wickedest men out there. All right? Seek the Lord while the time is near. Seek the Lord while the Lord is, is, is near and he's still here. Okay? With that, let's give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Call Halali and Allah, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rahakakwadash. Double honors again to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well in time of this truth. Shalom to the Bayat Wada and Shalom to the sincere Akwathium Salakia. Uh, let's finish off by saying DTA, Ababa Ball, Kwame Asharala. Lord willing, on to the next lesson. Shalom.